Okay, hi class. So today what we're going to be doing is we are going to be discussing the Stone Age. So the Stone Age is a broad prehistoric period during which stone was widely used to make tools with sharp edges at a point or a percussion surface. The period lasted roughly 3.4 million years and it ended between 600 BCE and 2000 BCE with the advent of metal working. So furthermore, bone tools were used during this period as well, but rarely preserved in the archeological record. So although we know that bone tools were used, the problem is that they were not able to preserve them. So unlike a lot of stone, the bone decomposed. Okay, so this vocabulary is really important for you guys to know. So, like many words in the English language, they have multiple meanings. So for some of these vocabulary words, I will give you multiple definitions, even though the one that is the, the largest font is going to be the correct one that we are using for this class. Okay, so fossil, the remains, or impression of a prehistoric organism preserved in petrified form or as a mold or cast in rock. So when we're talking about fossils, this is what we're talking about. And I do have some pictures that you guys will be able to see in the next slide. Um, however, another definition of fossil is going to be um, a derogatory or humorous, an antiquated or stubbornly unchanging person or thing. So that would be seen like an old person can be seen as a fossil. Um, okay, so next is going to be shelter. A place giving temporary protection from bad weather or danger. A place providing food and accommodation for the homeless. So spear, a weapon with a long shaft and a pointed tip typically of metal used for thrusting or throwing. So even though this definition talks about how the, the point would typically be metal, obviously when we're talking about the Stone Age, it would not be metal because they didn't know how to smelt metal together or melt it together so that you can create this hard metal form. So the tip would be of stone, not of metal, okay? So nomad. A member of a people having no permanent abode or house and who travel from place to place to find fresh pasture for livestock. Um, another example would be a person who does not stay long in the same place or a wanderer. Stone Age, a prehistoric period when weapons and tools were made of stone or of organic materials such as bone, wood, or horn. Okay, so here are some pictures of the vocabulary that I just went over. So if you look at your upper left-hand corner, that is a picture of a fossil. So it's a fossil of a dinosaur. I apologize, I don't know what type of dinosaur it is. Just know it's a fossil of a dinosaur. Uh, and then if you're going to just look over to the right-hand corner. That is a picture of what a prehistoric home would look like. So a prehistoric home would be made of stuff around the earth. And then what they would do is they would move from that area whenever they needed to move, say, for hunting and gathering, they needed to move on. They could easily just move and, and make a new place. And then if you look below those pictures, it's a picture of spears. These ones, I do believe from my research, they are of stone, even though they look a little bit like metal. Because they've chipped them, it just looks kind of smooth like metal, but it is, in fact, stone. Okay, so tools. Stone tools were made from a variety of different kinds of stone. For example, flint and chert were shaped or chipped for use as cutting tools and weapons, while basalt 
and sandstone were used for ground stone tools, such as kiran stone. Wood, bone, shell, antler, and other materials were widely used as well. During the most recent part of the period, sediments, like clay, were used to make pottery. And then right below you can see a picture of some prehistoric and uh, Stone Age pottery that they had found. So it is preserved, but they do have this in, um, I believe, it's in a museum in New York City. You can go and see. I think it's the Natural History Museum that I got this picture from. Okay, so to continue with this, with these tools, here are a whole bunch of different tools and kind of what they would be used for. So the first, on, let's start on the upper left-hand corner. So the hatchet head would be used to, say, like break down some wood. Just like if you were to use a hatchet today, that one, the only difference is that the hatchet that you use today is made out of metal. This one, they learned how to cut the stone so that they could use it like a hatchet. Okay, so then scraping tool. The scraping tool, basically, if, if they made the side of it very, very sharp, if they had like a, an animal carcass, they would skin the animal using that scrapping tool so you could take off all the, the pelt of it, and then you could use the pelt for, say, um, material. Okay, and then the cutting tool, it would be used the same way as a knife would be used. And then nut grinder, exactly what it sounds like. It's used to grind all the different nuts that they would eat. And then thumb held grinder. It's just another, another kind of grinder where you could hold your thumb and you could grind in a certain way. Knife, exactly what it sounds like. They would cut it so, it, so you could use it just like you would use your kitchen knife. Okay. Um, Hammerhead. Just like you use a hammer, so if they want to build anything, they would use these stones in order to hammer things in. Okay, so fossils of skulls and bones have been discovered in East Africa, India, and Europe. We think they came from creatures like humans who lived 14 million years ago. Other fossils have been found from creatures who apparently lived anywhere from 1.3 million years to 5.5 million years ago. The fossils of a human-like creature who scientists call ne Neanderthal man were found in Eurasia and Africa. These fossils are thought to be around 1,000 years old, and some scientists think Neanderthal man is a direct ancestor of modern humans. However, others believe that Neanderthal man died out and that modern humans are descended from a smaller, more upright creature who lived over a million years ago in Europe, Africa, and China. So, as we can see, there are plenty of opinions, but we just don't know for sure one way or the other. So the great thing about social studies and about history and about science and all these different things that we have going on right now is that we have made these discoveries, but there's a lot more discoveries to be made. So obviously we've heard of the Neanderthal man, but we're not quite sure if that's where humans come from or if it's this different descendant of humans. We're not quite sure yet, and there's still a lot of science that's going on to prove that. Okay, so the early significance of the Stone Age. The Stone Age is nearly contemporaneous, so contemporary, with the evolution of the genus Homo. The only exception possibly being at the very beginning when species prior to Homo may have manufactured tools. According to the age and location of the current evidence, the cradle of the genus is the East African Rift System, especially towards the north in Ethiopia, where it is bordered by grasslands. 
the closest relative among other, other living primates, the genus Pan, represents a branch that continued on the deep forest where primates evolved. So when we're looking at the origins of man and the difference between the Neanderthal man and then the other um, subspecies that they think that humans came from, this is what we're talking about is the genus Pan, who is represented in the deep forest. So this is where we start to see the model of um, primates moving up to be man and what our concept of man is today or humans. So this is where we're going to start to see this. This is where a lot of scientists believe that humans came from. So they didn't originate from the Neanderthal man because they believe that that species of human or that species fell out and they were extinct. Right, so like the woolly mammoth, they became extinct, but the pan represents that branch that moved throughout the primates. So the rift served as a conduit for movement into South Africa and also down the Nile into North Africa and through the continuation of the rift in the Levant to the vast grasslands of Asia.